Good morning. The title of the devotional this morning is Healing a Broken Heart. In her very sensitive book entitled Blood, Alison Morer reveals her emotions, her agonies, and her suffering after seeing her father murder her mother and then commit suicide. In the early part of her book, she digresses momentarily to talk about coffee cups, just a one-page introspection opening up a glimpse into her life journey after the tragedy of the deaths of her mother and father. After describing some personal warm remembrances about her mama, she writes this telling and revealing sentence. There are parts of a heart that never heal once they are broken. There is no glue that will hold. I have thought about that statement and how desperate a statement it is. There are parts of a heart that never heal once they are broken. We need to be extremely careful when we are in relationship that we do not damage another person's heart. The closer we get to one another, the more we love, the more we express the love, the more give, the more love we give, the more tender our voice and the warmer our feelings the more vulnerable becomes our hearts. We're almost allowing the other to hold our hearts in their hands and thereby risk being hurt and hurt deeply. In some relationships, those hands holding our heart become crushing hands and our hearts are damaged almost beyond repair, hopefully not beyond repair. We might wonder if Allison's words are right on. There are parts of a heart that never heal once they are broken. When Jesus came as the personal and human messenger from God, he continually opens his mind, heart, and spirit to persons through his many encounters. Does he offer us some of his heart and some of God's heart? What a risk. Some have never received or taken, accepted his offer. Some have tentatively received it and then tossed it aside. Some may have warmly received it and then coldly pushed it back. In Dr. William Barclay's book on Jesus, entitled The Mind of Jesus, he has a chapter on sin, defining sin and looking at the many ways that sin is to be viewed. In one sentence, he writes about sin from a very unusual perspective. Let me read that to you. He says, there is another way to put this as he talks about sin. Since God is love, all sin is sin not so much against law as it is against love. Sin is not so much a breaking of God's law as it is a breaking of God's heart. Therefore, sin is the deliberate refusal of the invitation of God to be forgiven. We may have some reluctance to see God from this human a standpoint. Does God really feel this deeply, this intensely, this much? How deeply does God feel for us? Is it possible that the God who created us to feel such strong emotions and such love and possible hate and anger, does our God feel these as deeply as we do? And our God knows all about us what we're doing, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and what we're wanting, and he still loves us. In the parable of the prodigal son, which I kind of like to call 
the parable of the waiting father, if you will. Does the father's heart really ache and hurt when the son leaves home? And during all those weeks and months and maybe years, we're not told how long he was gone, how long he was away. Did the father's heart just ache as he misses his son, worries about him, imagines what might be going wrong in his life, wondering if he's all right, and wondering if he will ever come home. Does our God wonder about that? Does he feel that intensely? Oh, I have to tell you, I believe that he does. And then the highly and richly emotional scene when the son does come home. And as the scripture reads, so he returned home to his father and while he was still a long way off, his father saw him coming. Filled with love and compassion, he ran to his son, embraced him, hugged him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But his father said to the servants, Quick, bang, bring the finest robe in the house. Put it on him. Get a ring for his finger and sandals for his feet. And kill the calf we've been fattening. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. He was lost, but now he is found. And so... The party began. I was reading recently in one of my favorite books, uh, The Parables of Peanuts by Robert Short, in a chapter entitled Good News of a Great Joy. And he talks about this scene, if you will, of the son, the father, and the two sons. He says, God is the holy other whose ways are not our ways. He is under no compulsion to do what he does. He is not ruled by human standards of fairness and decency and justice. As a matter of fact, from the human point of view, God's mercy would sometimes, would, would often seem to be unfair in the equality of his final bounty, bounty to all. And then this sentence that really caught me. In the parable of the prodigal son, both the obedient and the disobedient sons are loved equally by their father. Do you believe that? That God, the father, can love someone who has sinned as much as he does everyone? Do we have that kind of a father? What an absolutely beautiful scene is described for us of a father who loves his son so very much. He waits so long and so eagerly, and now the celebration, the joy, the fantastic exuberance of joy. He was lost, and now he's found. Can you imagine both the emotion of the father and of the son, arms around each other, hugging one another, clasping one another, arms and body in sheer joy. And what about the fact that he loves this returned son and the other son, the older son, who's not been away, and he loves them equally? Can you believe in a father and a God who loves like that, loves both of his sons, loves each one of us 
equally? Maybe we don't understand how the Father can love all of us equally, but we are not supposed to understand. I don't think we can, but I celebrate the fact that in my belief, I believe in a Father who is capable and does love each one of us. Can you believe in a father like that? Do you? Will you believe in a God who loves each one of us equally?